Intros are stupid. So, here's a sentence or two. I don't know. I don't know math. I like the New Orleans Saints a lot next year, and I think they're going to win the NFC South. I'm going to give you a few reasons why after I do that basic subscribe to my YouTube sort of intro. So, in saying that, before I get into this video, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. This all support is very much appreciated. Helps me out more than you know. Now, let's get into why the New Orleans Saints are going to win the NFC South this upcoming season. The Saints are coming off of a year in which it was the first time they did not have Drew Brees at quarterback, which left them with Jameis Jabu Winston to take over the starting gig. I want to talk about how they were going to week eight. They were four and two, and they were a clear playoff team dominating the Packers before. And this is all crazy, but Sean Payton's that guy. But that game against the Buccaneers is where the season took a turn for the worst. As in the second quarter, Jameis Winston would tear his ACL and damage his MCL against the Buccaneers. But the Saints would still somehow come out victorious in this game by 9 points, scoring 36 points, and Jameis went down when they had 7, after Trevor Simeon would enter in relief of Winston. It sucks because Jameis was having his most efficient season, tossing 14 touchdowns to only 3 interceptions. He also had the third highest EPA per play in the league before he went down at 0.233, higher than players like Josh Allen and MVP Aaron Rodgers. However, in the box score stats like yards and completions, he was not great as he only had about 1,200 yards through those six games and completed 59% of his passes. You know, I thought this version of James was really out of character because he has always been a gunslinger Kind of like, you know, Brett Favre, same thing, like a lot of touchdowns, a lot of picks. But when you go from Mike Evans to Marquez Callaway as your number one receiver, it makes sense. But he was still that efficient with only Marquez Callaway to throw to. But I still see why he can't do the same things he used to in Tampa Bay. I mean, come on. Marquez Callaway was a Saints one, and he's just a wide receiver three at best on most teams. But Kamara, Winston, and that defense led them to some outstanding wins over Green Bay, New England, and Tampa in those first seven games. New Orleans would finish 9-8 and eight and be right outside the playoffs as the eighth seed with Trevor Simeon and Taysom Hill quarterback in the team. Hell, even Ian Book started a game. That was, that was bad. It was really a tragedy for Sean Payton. But you have to think, how does a team with bums and a gadget quarterback win five more games? One playing half of the Winston injury game and sweep the Buccaneers. Well, that's because it is a great team overall that just got even better this offseason. The Saints already have the pieces and some pieces coming back healthy. So 9-8 could be a floor for them, given what they already have seen with an injury riddled, no wide receiver, no quarterback team, and a chaotic 2021 season. The fact that they did that good with a terrible offense just proves that this team is going to have a major improvement in the win column this next season, especially with all the moves I'm about to bring up. During this offseason, like I'd mentioned, the Saints have made some major, major moves. And some of them were on defense, which helps first-year head coach Dennis Allen, who's very defensive-minded. The most important was the signing of all-pro safety Tyron Matthew. While yes, he's not the same player as he once was, He's a very big help after they lost Marcus Williams, yes, the Minneapolis Miracle guy, in free agency and Malcolm Jenkins to retirement. Like I said, new head coach Dennis Allen and the front office brought in this stud as a replacement for them, and that is a great replacement. Oh wait, I think they got another safety too. Yeah, and he's very underrated, and his name is Marcus May from the Jets. He's been a really good football player over the past couple of seasons, and nobody's talked about it because he's on the New York Jets. These moves only add to an already loaded defense that features stars like Cameron Jordan, Demario Davis, and Marshawn Lattimore, as well as some good surrounding pieces like pass rusher Marcus Davenport, who had nine sacks last year. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to bring up the acquisition of Daniel Sorensen because he is the worst safety in the NFL. The Saints last year were seventh in total yards allowed, fourth in points, and 10th in turnovers. Adding these two at safety, only helps this lockdown defense continue to get better and not allow anything deep down the field. Any team in the NFC South and the NFC as a whole should be afraid of this defensive unit. Too many studs reside on that side of the ball in New Orleans. While filling the safety position was a need for the Saints, 
it wasn't their biggest need. That was clearly the offense. They lost a big piece of that offense with tackle Teron Armstead, who went to Miami. But as a replacement, they drafted offensive tackle Trevor Penning, 19th overall. He's already on a decent offensive line, featuring Andres Pete and Ryan Ramchek. So no matter what, he will have some good pieces around him to help him succeed and to mentor him. The offensive line was clearly never the biggest issue, though. Wide receiver always was, as I've mentioned with Marquez Callaway. Obviously, we all knew Michael Thomas was coming back from injury this season after a confusing 2021. When healthy, he's a top five receiver in the league, so no doubt him coming back alone is a huge help. But that's not all the help they got. They also drafted wide receiver Chris Olave from Ohio State, who was seen as potentially the best receiver in the class, and they got him at pick 11. They also signed my favorite player and veteran wide receiver, Jarvis Landry, boosting their wide receiver core to what potentially could be an elite group if Olave pans out. Their number one receiver from last year is now their number four, and I don't think I've ever seen that before. The front office saw the need and made it clear that they were going to fill it and did a great job at that, getting some good pieces around Michael Thomas and Jameis Winston. The offense now has some weapons with Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram out of the backfield, the four wideouts I've named, maybe Adam Trotman, I mean, I think he has some potential, and of course, Taysom Hill doing his gadget stuff. Both sides of the ball now look elite for the Saints, and potentially could be better on paper than the Buccaneers, definitely in the secondary. You may say, but Joe, Sean Payton left, he resigned. Thank you, I, I know that, um, that's gonna come up right now. Well. Dennis Allen has proved he's a great defensive-minded coach. He's been the defense coordinator since 2015, has coached team to an elite defense in 2020 and 2021, and a top 11 defense in 2019. So I have a lot of faith in Dennis Allen. I think a defensive-minded coach will help the Saints, since that will most likely be their identity going into next season. They also have the same offensive coordinator they've had for the past 14 years, and Pete Carmichael. So the coaching staff is very similar to what it once was, just without the offensive genius in Sean Payton. But Carmichael's learned a lot from Payton, so I don't think we should be worried. Another thing you guys will say, but Joe, the Buccaneers have Tom Brady and they're a great team. Thank you. Again, I know that. They have Tom Brady, as I just said, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Shaq Barrett, and more, and I also need to teach myself how to not repeat myself, but the Saints have owned the Bucks in the last six contests, going undefeated against them. Keep in mind that four are against Brady. The rest of the NFC South is terrible. With a fully healthy, stacked team, they can definitely go 6-0 in the division because, you know, they play the Marks, Mariota, and Sam Darnold, Falcons, and Panthers. Or, at worst, 5-1, unless they randomly lose a game to the Falcons and Panthers. That would be stupid. But they might split it with the Bucks. But I think they can sweep them again because of how talented the roster is now and how a lot of those wins against Tampa Bay came with poor quarterback play from the Saints, and that's going to change, obviously, with Jameis coming back fully healthy. New Orleans has a huge opportunity this season. Playing in a top-loaded division, and the NFC just being a weird conference with teams such as Dallas and Green Bay getting worse this year, they can go 10-7 or 11-6, maybe even better. But I just looked at their schedule, and I said those records because it depends on the Browns game and if Deshaun Watson is suspended or not, because... If he is, it's a win. If not, it's a loss. You also can't forget one thing. Jameis Winston will be healthy, has 20-20 vision, and finally has a supporting cast that he did not have in the first six and a half games of last year. He will be a top 10 quarterback in the league this season and will lead the Saints to an NFC title, not just NFC South. <laughs> well, uh, that was a joke. Um, he's my favorite quarterback just because he's hilarious with how he talks and his workout videos. But winning the NFC South is not a joke. Him being top 10, yes, joke. I promise. Jameis and his new shiny toys, and Tyron Matthew, Demario Davis, and Cameron Jordan being the leaders of the defense will lead this team to double-digit wins and make Tom Brady cry in, hopefully, both regular season matchups. Before I go to the outro, here's a video of Jameis dancing on crutches the same week he tore his ACL right after the game, after they won. I know you've all seen it, but it's amazing, so... Just watch it again. Come on, 
And with all that being said, that is it for me, guys. Thank you for tuning into Fnatic Sports. If you made it this far in the video, come on, just give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It's all support. It's very much appreciated. Helps me out more than you know. Also, follow me on Instagram at Fnatic Sports 25 and on Twitter and TikTok at Fnatic Sports. This is Joe from Fnatic Sports. One-handed this time, signing off.